Hello, welcome back to another video. Today we will be ranking the top 20 Mario Party minigames in the entire series. Let's get started! In 20th place, we have Shy Guy Says. Originally in the first Mario Party, Shy Guy Says has returned multiple times throughout the series. Shy Guy will hold up a flag and players must hold up the matching flag. As the game progresses, Shy Guy goes faster and starts faking out which flag he will raise. Once a player raises the wrong flag or takes too long to raise a flag, they are out. Last player standing wins. This game is very fun and tests reaction time and patience, as not waiting long enough means you can be faked out, and not being quick enough means you could get eliminated. In 19th place, we have Crazy Cutters. This minigame first appeared in the original Mario Party, and was in Mario Party 2 as a battle game in Mario Party Superstars. Players trace a shape out, and the player that deviates from the lines the least is the winner. While I suck at this game, it can be very competitive, and the fact that the game offers multiple shapes to cut out helps keep the game fresh and not repetitive. In 18th place, we have Rock and Raceway. Originally in Mario Party 3, Rock and Raceway can also be found in the top 100 and Mario Party Superstars. Players race a rocking horse to the finish line while trying not to run out of stamina. There are some carrot panels that switch between each other, which will either temporarily stun you or temporarily give you unlimited stamina. This minigame involves a bit of timing, luck, and strategy, which gives all players a good chance of winning. In 17th place, we have Pokey Pummel from Mario Party 7. Players just mash A until their Pokey is pummeled out of existence. Fastest wins. This minigame is quick and has a nice design to it, making it one of my favorite button mashers. In 16th place, we have Mushroom Mix-Up. This game is from the original Mario Party and later in Mario Party Superstars with some similar versions in different games as well. Toad holds up a color and every mushroom other than that specific color will lower. If you are not on the mushroom that does not lower, you will be eliminated. The game gets faster and faster and players can squash each other, making the survival minigame chaotic and a great way to end a friendship. If you are enjoying the video so far and would like to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out as I try and grow the channel. Now back to the rankings. In 15th place, we have Catch a Letter, originally in Mario Party 6. Players pick up fallen letters and try to give them to a panicked Shy Guy that is running around chaotically. Whoever hands Shy Guy the most letters wins. This is a fun game that gives all skill levels a chance to win, as the random Shy Guy movements can make some players very lucky or unlucky. This game has a good mix of chaos, frustration, and fun. In 14th place, we have Mr. Blizzard's Brigade from Mario Party 4. Players run on an ice field while Mr. Blizzard throws snowballs at them. Last player to get hit wins. As the game continues, more Mr. Blizzards show up, making the game increasingly hard and chaotic. The snowmen will hop and face the exact direction they will throw, giving players an idea of where they need to avoid. Although with so many snowmen, it can be hard. This is a very chaotic game that offers some strategy and luck. In 13th place, we have Fun Run from Mario Party 7. Players run to the end of the course while avoiding various obstacles. First player to the end wins. I really like how this minigame is set up. It feels intense all the way through, and one mistake can be the difference between winning and losing. It is simple enough for starting players to understand what to do, but gives the edge to more skilled players. In 12th place, we have Sandwiched from Mario Party Jamboree. Different sizes of sandwich squares fall into a picnic basket. Players must essentially jump onto the sandwiches and not get squished. Last player standing wins. This minigame is very chaotic but has some strategy to it. I love the design of the minigame and it feels pretty unique to the other survival minigames in the series. This is my favorite minigame that was made by ND Cube. In 11th place, we have Nightlight Fright, originally from Mario Party 5. Players must shine their flashlight at the charging chain chomp before it hits them. Closest without getting hits wins. This game is really fun and suspenseful as the chain chomp charges at different speeds and intervals for all players, meaning you can't really gauge that well when to shine based off of others. Now moving on to the top 10. In 10th place, we have Triple Jump. Originally in Mario Party 5, players mash the A button for their first jump, B for their second, and A again for their third. Farthest jump wins. This is my favorite button masher as players can mess up the transitions between buttons. This means unlike other button mashers where typically the same person would win, 
it is possible for someone else to win if the favorite messes up. I also just really like the theme of this minigame. In ninth place, we have Facelift from the original Mario Party, and it returns in a lot of sequels. In the beginning, a character's face will be shown and distorted. The player's job is to recreate the distorted face. Closest to the original wins. This game requires more attention to detail, which is something I just don't have, but it's fun nonetheless. I also like that we get different characters' faces that can be distorted. In 8th place, we have Leaf Leap, originally in Mario Party 5. Players jump. Go up! What do you think? Just go up! Sorry. Onto leaves that will either be right above them or above them and to the side. If a player incorrectly jumps to the wrong side, they may fall. The player that goes the highest wins. I really like this minigame as it has a bit of reaction time and control involved. Essentially, your mind has to work faster than your hands in order to do well. In 7th place, we have Coney Island, originally in Mario Party 5. Players run around with cones trying to catch falling scoops of ice cream that can be seen through shadows on the ground. The players with the most scoops wins. This minigame is a classic for me. I love how weird the concept of the game is, and I like that the players have to race to every shadow to get the scoop before someone else does. In 6th place, we have Bombs Away from the original Mario Party, and the minigame also features in quite a few sequels. Bowser's shooting cannonballs at the magically floating island, and players must avoid getting knocked into the water or hit with cannonballs. Last player standing wins. This game, depending on the version played, can feel very chaotic, and players have to be vigilant on where the cannonballs will land and how it will affect the island. In 5th place, we have Fish Upon a Star, originally from Mario Party 5. Players try to knock each other off a platform that is getting destroyed by flying cheap cheap. I really like the weird concept minigames, apparently. Last player standing wins. This game can go quick or it can last the entire duration, but as time goes on, it gets harder and harder as the platform breaks. I love to play a version of this where the players can't hit each other just to see who can last the longest. In fourth place, we have Book Squirm, originally from Mario Party 4. Players try to fit through holes in the page before the page squashes them. Last player standing wins. This minigame has a very simple concept and is probably among the favorite minigames of the entire community. The game becomes more hectic as the pages fall faster and there are less holes to fit through, meaning you can sort of bully your soon-to-be ex-friends in this minigame. In third place, we have Hotel Goomba from Mario Party 5. If you can't tell, I really like Mario Party 5's minigames. Players must punch Goombas out of their way to clear a path to the next level, each level being harder than the last. The first player to clear all three levels wins. This minigame is my favorite puzzle type of minigame, as you must plan ahead, especially in the last stage, or risk having to waste time and reset. What I like a lot about this minigame is you don't necessarily have to be skilled in Mario games to be good at this minigame, you just have to be good at finding paths. In second place, we have Granite Getaway, originally from Mario Party 6. I'm pleasantly surprised to see this minigame in Mario Party Jamboree, as I didn't think this minigame was that popular. I also like the updated visuals. Players run away from a boulder and dodge obstacles to reach the end. Any player to make it or last one to fail wins. This minigame is clearly inspired by Indiana Jones, and I love the perspective of it, having to dodge obstacles that are in front of us that we can't see yet. It is a solid minigame. Before I announce the winner, here are a few honorable mentions. Trip Navigator from Super Mario Party is a pretty fun and quick minigame. Avalanche from Mario Party 4 is a fun race and survival game that feels fast paced. Dodge Bomb from Mario Party 5 is a solid minigame that is just dodgeball and typically only lasts 3 seconds. And Fuzzy Flight Squall from Super Mario Party uses the Switch motion controls really well. In first place, we have Pushy Penguins from Mario Party 5. This minigame is a perfect combination of skill and luck for me. Players try to stay on the platform as penguins run across the platform pushing players toward the ice-cold water. As the penguins all go different speeds, players have to predict openings in the past before they come and hope that the penguins that are coming just up ahead don't completely eviscerate them. I remember as a kid absolutely loving this minigame, and as an adult, I still do. And that is my top minigames in the Mario Party series. 
If you like this video, check out this one where I rank all the main console Mario parties. Until next time, bye now!